Tempest! <laughs> Welcome back to our off the track episodes. If anyone doesn't remember this one, this is Mowgli, our four year old off the track thoroughbred. Any of you who don't remember or you haven't met him yet, this was him. And we'll go and have a look at him when we first got him. Buck jumping around the round yard. Woohoo! But now, guys, he's like this. Look at him. He's so happy. We were just doing funny selfies just before. He's really, really, really come along. So I can't wait to show you how well he's come along over the past few months. But he's really starting to get balanced. Still struggles a little bit in that canter transition, but he's getting there. And we still have to use our two point position to help him a little bit. But I'm going to go through that with you, show you how he's going. Um, and it's going to be great. But before we get started, remember guys, for the month of April, we're doing a, a learning reward for you. So every video twice a week, they come out, every video you watch, if you're a subscriber, you just comment below the one thing that you learned. And at the end of the month, I'm going to give away 500 pounds to one of my subscribers, okay? And all you have to do is subscribe and comment below what you learned. We're gonna do that for April, May, and June. Guess what? At the end of June, if you do that the whole way through, three months of learning, I'm gonna give away somebody else a thousand pounds with even more prizes, bridles, jackets, Dressage Mastery Academy members, so much. Okay, so get involved guys. And there's also runner up prizes of one month Dressage Mastery Academy with me as well. We actually get to get on Zoom and talk to me direct. So enjoy the video as normal, but also get involved. Yay! Okay, let's get going. Okay guys, so as you can see, our little man has come a really, really long way. You'll see in the beginning, he struggles a little bit to find his train tracks. And when I say in train tracks, I mean his two tracks. He gets a little bit wobbly, but I have lots of control now, so I'm able to solve that really easy. The other thing is, you'll see that his trot is a little bit sewing machine-esque. That's the way I like to describe it. It's a little bit choppy and a little bit, not arrhythmical, but not, it doesn't look comfortable, does it? Now that is because he struggles in the warm up a little bit with his length bend. And that's the bend all the way down here, yeah? So if you, let him go a little bit too much forward or pressure him to go forward. And I'll try it a little bit here so you see it. As you pressure him, he finds it really quite tricky to do. So I just let him go where he's comfortable, which is about here. And then over time, we use the suppling in the warm up to allow him to take a bigger step, okay? And you'll see that. You see, I play a little bit with his tempo and I'm constantly just thinking in this warm up stage, good boy, to help him find his rhythm and adjust his shoulders. Good boy. So the first time I ask him to take a bigger step, I do it on a circle line so that I can use that suppling part of his body to allow him, good boy, to take a bigger step in a comfortable way. So it's almost a little bit like a leg yield on a circle. And then I apply it to the straight line. If you, good boy. If you do it straight from the straight line, it can be a little bit much for them, good boy. So again, you watch that again, and you can see you can anticipate it a little bit, and he gets a bit worried, good boy. I take a bigger step with the leg yield on the circle, keep that, and then go forward. And you can see the trot just gets better and better, and you're using the lines, to help him use his body rather than pressuring him. And that's what we always want to think about with these horses. How can we use the lines, what, oh, sorry sweetheart, to make them go better, good boy, versus pressuring them. And then you can see now his poles come up a little bit more. 
He's got a really nice rhythm to his trot. Good boy. And then I can say a little bit. Go a bit more for me, Mogi. What a good boy. Then again, I turn a circle. Little bit leg yield on the circle. So I push those quarters out a little bit. And you can see in that moment, it's a little bit uncomfortable for him. That's completely okay because we're gymnasticizing him in that moment. Good boy. And then we go out. And again, you see, the result is a much steadier contact, a much freer horse, and a horse that's not diving like this so much. Good boy, Mo, so proud of you. So you can see how much he's improved. Look at the video here from him when we very first started, those first times in the arena. He was so much naughtier. He was so bad. And you can see how much more comfortable he's become. Doing that, isn't it amazing? Okay guys, so, the, I've just, we've just stopped halfway through. This is a Zoom meeting from my real Dressage Mastery members. So these are people that get to speak to me in real time and they're asking questions about how to get a horse on the pit, how to deal with horses like this. And it's real life questions with real life answers in real time. And I'm putting these into all my videos now so that you guys can not only hear from me, but hear from our members as well and get their takes and their questions questions and hopefully it'll click in a different way for you. So enjoy that. I moved properties with my horse. I talked to you in early December. I don't know if yeah. you probably don't remember. Um, but so I had a trail ride schedule for tomorrow. First one on the new property. They have about 180 acres to go. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's still going to happen because my daycare canceled. But I was just wondering if you have any tips for a first trail ride with a spooky horse. Oh, so uh, yeah. And is it sorry, I missed that. Was it on your property or, or off your property? It's, it's on the property, but she's never been really where we're going to go. It's going to be. And are you um, going with other horses? Yeah, with one or two other horses. And I think one of them, from what I understand, can be a little jiggy and just a little mm. not the calmest one. The so other one is new also. It's going to sound a little bit extreme, but actually having someone walk with you is a really good idea. Is that possible? I don't think so. That's okay. I would have to pay, I would have to pay the trainer to walk with me because I wouldn't ask her to just go walk with me and okay. I think she might be busy. Okay, so even I, like when I first started with Mowgli and horses like that, I even got someone to lead me always. So if you want to have like the absolute optimum, picture perfect, safe, op safe option, that is what I would recommend that you have someone lead. If that's not possible or you, you think that's a bit too extreme, then the big key is to um, make sure that you, you don't put yourself in danger. So, for example, keep a really close eye on the surfaces that you're walking on because what often happens in when they, they spook and things like that, it's less about the spook that causes the problem but more about what they hit or how they slip or those sorts of things. So make sure that you don't do anything silly and, like, walk over, um, you know, slippery ground or really deep sand or even a road or anything like that. Um, and if you do need to do those things, sort of wait, have a think about it, think, okay, is it better if I get off first? It may not be because, um, you know, maybe you may you may not be very good at getting on and off quickly and easily, but you yeah. but just to have a good think about it. What a lot of people do is sort of just cruise along and hope for the best. Yeah. If, you, if you just think and look at your surroundings you would be really amazed the difference to your safety that that makes um okay. and no one else with you will i don't know what happens no one does when people go on hacks they just go and then get surprised when something goes wrong um so your peers around you they won't be and they won't be overly cautious and they'll do silly things don't so don't follow them be your own person make your own decisions yeah. um and that's the biggest piece of advice that I can give you. Don't be afraid to turn back. So don't I can try. She's probably just going to follow everybody else. That's well, what I mean is, is, is if you're feeling uncomfortable, don't feel proud. 
If you think it's not quite oh, right, no. it, there is absolutely nothing wrong with getting off and walking back at okay. all. So um, I just like that that's the most important thing is that you don't be brave, if you know what I mean. Um, ideally, having a horse that's a bit hot and jig-joggy going with you isn't ideal. So yeah. if you go with just one other horse that's really calm um, and even one that you can kind of like run your horse into a bit. So, you know, if they, if they go up too close underneath behind their bottom, that's okay. Or they might, you know, get really close to the legs and that's okay. If you can avoid going with a horse that's got issues, um, it, it's just, it's just not a very smart move as you first go out because you don't maybe she'll take somebody else I have to feel her out because she's leasing a horse but she's sometimes saying that she takes another horse out on the trail right so I'll have to ask her ask. my horse likes to follow pretty closely so that's going to be I need to yeah and and, and as soon as you need to stop that from happening um, that's when you're going to come across problems so you want to make sure that the people the horses that you're going with that that's that they're fine with that and that's okay. Yeah. Um, so that so that your horse can get really close to the other horse and sort of get confidence from them. Um, so that's all I have to say. It, it, it's not really a huge amount of skill in it. It's just about not being smart. Really, yeah, just being smart. Yeah. Um, you know, there are loads of obstacles. There, there, there is loads. You look at the you gotta look at the ground, look at puddles. Um, you know, don't ride on the buckle of your rein and then get surprised when your horse pisses off on you. Um <laughs> um ride with slightly shorter stirrups um as well because it gives you a little bit of a bit more stability when you're in the saddle if something does go wrong um don't you know if, you, if you've got boots or bandages on make sure that you put um electrical tape around them so that they can't come undone while you're while you're out and about just little things like that um take a mobile phone with you put it in your pocket but don't use it so don't be out there taking photos and things like that <laughs> you know wait a few times before you do that I know that you've seen me on Wessel like with my camera <laughs> yeah Wessel is different well, but, but I've had him for 20 years you know pushing 20 yeah. years so it's a bit different um so it's just about taking one step at a time until you know them so originally when we started working with him, he was very, very, very stiff to one side. And what that meant is he actually physically couldn't turn, couldn't bend, he really couldn't move one way at all. What that manifests as now, as a more advanced horse, is on this rein, he constantly wants to put his quarters in. And you'll see, if I just let him go, that's how he happily would ride. Just like that, yeah? You can see his quarters just sort of hang in like this, okay? If Tobe can sprint to the other side now and see me from the other side, again, as I come through, I'll put him where he, he wants to go like this all the time. So to fix that, we actually just need to ride the shoulders in. You see how that straightens out, okay? So on this side, we're constantly thinking actually, whoop, there's the wobble, a little bit shoulder forward, or even sometimes a little bit in, to allow him to be a little bit straighter, okay? So remember, the issues that they have as crazy, crazy babies, again, like you saw before, whoop, little wobble, are still there later, but they manifest in different ways. And so you can see now, that's what we're working on. Good boy. I'm so proud of him. So again, you see here from back where he was and he's bucking around, not putting his head down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All of those moments were for the same reason that he's crooked now. We just have a little bit more control now. And that is the massive difference. So because we've got control now, we're able to use the shoulder rid, the traver, et cetera, to help us gymnasticize him more. So now, because we're able to use that shoulder and traver to gymnasticize him more, every day he gets better and better. Okay, and you watch, he's already starting to get those things. So he's got, oh, good boy, little bit traver, what do we want to always think about is the rhythm. Then we can go straight. And you can see there, that's upset him a little bit in the front because that was really quite hard for him. So we go travel, and then we go straight again. And the straight is, 
with somewhat no message. Okay, try that again. Little bit of try there. Good boy. And then straight. Little bit of try there. And then straight. And you notice, every time I ask him for that little bit of try there, his trot slows down, okay? So the next step that we're gonna do is go, right little man, I want you to keep your pace the same even in travers. So now, sorry sweetheart, I'm gonna go a little bit travers. His pace changes a bit, so I turn a circle in travers, which helps his body move, makes him take a bigger step. So we really help him find that bigger step, and then we continue with the travers. Do you see that? It fixes the actual pace. How exciting is that? And I can even do it while I'm looking back at you guys. <laughs> Good boy, little man. We'll give him a little walk break. So you can see guys, the problems that you have when you very first start, that's one thing, you know? He's bucking, he won't put his head down. He's a bit dangerous to be fair. And then all of a sudden, as you get more control, those issues are still there. And when you challenge him, he still reacts in the same way. So he still might flick his head up for a moment, find a little bit of unevenness, etc. But it's much, <laughs> it's much, much, much more controllable. Yeah? Does that make a bit of sense, guys? And that work, even though you think to yourself, oh, he's not sweating, he's not hugely puffing. I've had pneumonia. I'm probably puffing more than he is trying to talk and, and work. But that's still very, very hard on his body. So actually, when you get a little wind like that, because that's a big win, he's gone travers, normally he loses his tempo. Then you turn a circle, which is pretty hard, and then he reaches the wall, keeps the travers and makes the tempo big. Wow, that's a massive achievement. You know, it really is utterly amazing. So in that point, for a horse like this, it's a bit of a reward is actually what you need, yeah? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna walk around and then I will just do what I would call a token canter. Just a token canter to say to him, you've worked really hard right here. I'm gonna ask you to give me a little bit more and that's where the submission of the training comes in. But the second he gives it to me, we'll call it a day. Yeah? Then tomorrow when we ride him, we go, right, this was a really hard exercise that we did here with the suppling of the, with the travers onto the circle, etc. So then the next day we might start to focus on something else. The really important thing when you're riding these horses, don't forget he's only just four. In fact, he's not quite four, is to not overwork them and take the little tiny wins. And as you can see, there's no editing in this. It's all just running through. And that's because I wanna show you what really happens. And that little Traver on a circle there, I really didn't expect him to react so well. He went from sewing machine trot as soon as you make him Traver to using that circle line to get him to take a full step and he took it. So you really wanna reward them, yeah? But he's getting a bit further in his training now and he still needs to just toe the line a bit too. So always remember when they're at this point, great success, then one more thing, then move on. Okay, does that make a bit of sense guys? Because it's all about training them in a way that they enjoy the work as well. And when they really let you in in a moment like that, that you can really say thank you and give them an incentive to do it again. Give them an incentive to help you, okay? So let's pop him into trot again. Oh, it's okay, lovely. Come on. And you can already see that's really been a lot of work for him. Good boy. Okay, so we'll let him go again. And you see as we've stopped, he's gone a little bit back to that sewing machine trot. So we're gonna find the forward first. Good boy. That's a good boy. We might change the rain a couple of times and we just keep playing with him until we're satisfied that he feels happy again. That his trot, his basic paces, his connection is all just in a better place. Good boy, lovely. Good boy. Good boy. 
Good boy, very good boy. Good boy. And guys, what an improvement is that? Hey, do you remember what his strikes off the canter used to be? Good boy. Very good boy. And then that's it for the day. People ask me, how, why, how have I got him so far so quick? Again, remember what he used to be like. Remember the careering around. Remember the not going on the bit. Look at our first attempt at doing um, canter transitions. It wasn't that pretty <laughs> at all. How did I get him to this way this quickly? Is challenging him, yes but giving him massive, massive reward and not taking the mickey, so to speak. If he gives you a really good, I can do this, mummy, reward him for that, yeah? He's still gotta learn that he still has to keep doing his work and we'll build and build and build on things. And now he's at the point where, yeah, I say, do one more thing you don't like and then you can go to bed. But in the beginning, we didn't even do that. And that's how you get this bond with your horse. That's how you get a friendship with your horse. And that's how a horse like him, who actually is a little bit neurotic, doesn't really want to work and has lots of things going against him for the sport, comes so good and works so well for you. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this guys. I hope that, good boy sweetheart, this really helped you. And for those of you who know Mowgli, really excited, excited you about how much he's going well. How much he's going well? That's not very good English, is it? <laughs> how well he is going. Remember to have a look at the other videos if you haven't met him before. And also guys, remember for the entire month of April, 500 pounds up for grabs. All you've got to do is press the subscribe button and comment below. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I can't wait to spend the next three months teaching you even more stuff. Bye guys. Mwah!